Good afternoon, geometry students. I hope that you are doing well. We are gonna do notes for 10.4. I'm gonna to try to keep them a little bit short today. Basically, we have four theorems and I'm gonna kind of show you the theorem and the example at the same time. We're gonna be talking about something called inscribed angles. So an inscribed angle is an angle that is on, its vertex is on the circle. We had looked at central angles before, and central angles, as you know, have their vertex in the center of the circle. But with an inscribed angle, the vertex is on the outside of the circle. So this would be our inscribed angle. And then this arc right here would be the intercepted arc intercepted arc. Now, the theorem that we want to learn tells us that the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So for example, Let's say that this arc is 100 degrees. What would the measure of the angle be? The measure of the angle would be 50. We can also kind of do this theorem backwards. If we want to look at, let's do another angle in the same circle here. Let's look at this angle right here. If I know the measure of an angle, let's say that's 20 degrees, I can double it to get the measure of the arc. So you can think of it as the angle is half of the arc or the arc is double the angle. But either way, it's essentially the same information. So that's our first theorem. Now, the second theorem tells us that if we have two inscribed angles inside the same circle, and they intercept the same arc, then the angles have to be congruent. So for example here, let's call these uh, angle one and angle two. Because angle one and angle two intercept the same arc, I know that angle one is congruent to angle two. So let's just say, for example, that this angle was labeled as being um, 9x plus 2 for its measure. And this one was labeled as being 12x minus 13. Because the angles are congruent, I can set their measures equal to each other. So if I wanted to solve for x, I would just do opposite operations. So I'd have two equals three X minus 13. The opposite of subtracting 13 would be adding 13. And then the opposite of multiplying by three would be dividing by three and I could get X that way. If I wanted to find the actual measure of the angle, I could just plug in five for X. So for example, nine times five would be 45 plus two more would be 47. Okay, there's two other theorems. One of them we could kind of already guess just from what we learned on the first theorem, but that is if you have a semicircle, which is basically formed by putting a diameter through the middle of the circle. And um, we have an angle that intercepts a semicircle. That angle has to be a right angle. Now, does anybody know why that angle would have to be a right angle? It's because the semicircle is going to be 180 degrees. And because the inscribed angle has to be half that amount, then we know that that is a 90 degree angle. So for example, if I had this picture here and I had labeled this angle here as X plus four, and let's say this one here was eight X minus four, I would be able to solve for X 
if I knew that this was a semicircle because that would tell me that this angle was 90 degrees and then I would know that the other two would add up to 90 degrees because there would have to be 180 degrees total. So the 8x plus one more x would be 9x. The fours would end up canceling out. And then I would just do opposite operations to get that x was 10. Now, something you should know is that the converse of this theorem is also true. If I know I have an inscribed angle that is 90 degrees, then the arc that it intercepts is going to be 180 and the ends of the arc are gonna be on a diameter of the circle. All right, the last thing that we need to learn about is what happens when we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. So if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, it means that all four of its vertices are on the outside of the circle. In that case, I know that the angles that are opposite each other are going to be what we call supplementary. And of course, that means that they are going to add up to 180. So let's say that angle 2 had a measure of 14x. And let's say that angle 1 had a measure of 8x plus 4. Think for a minute about what our equation would need to be. We know they're supplementary, so I know that 8x plus 4 plus 14x would have to be 180. Then I combine my like terms, so I would have 22x plus 4 equals 180. I would subtract 4 and get 22x equals 176. And then I would divide by 22 to solve for x and get that x is 8. And again, if I needed to know either the measure of angle 1 or the measure of angle 2, I could just plug 8 back in for x and solve. So those are the four basic theorems that we need to know for 10.4, and we will go over more examples like that in our homework. Have a good day, guys.